Hello everyone and welcome, welcome back to the channel. I'm glad to have everyone here today. So as I mentioned in the chat already, uh, feel free to ask any questions during the show today. Uh, I will see if I can answer them. So, but uh, before we start, let's see who we have in the house. Let me know where you are watching from, uh, which country. I'm uh, quite curious to see where you're all from. Now, while we are waiting for those responses, let me already say that, okay, um, today we're going to talk about the release of FSD beta in uh, Australia and New Zealand and why that actually can happen while uh, in Europe we actually cannot do this uh, and we still cannot do this. But yeah, uh, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, I think uh, it's kind of complicated, but then again, it's not that complicated, uh, but we'll see. So Graham, welcome from the UK. Uh, Ryan from Austria. So we have a European audience, which is not surprising, of course. Um, but anyway, so let's dive into it. Hey, Italy, Belgium. Okay, Europe is uh, in the house. Awesome. Thank you, guys. And uh, thank you for joining. Um, so yeah, let me start with the obvious thing and some Tweets have misinterpreted this, uh, of course. So Tesla has released it on Friday. Um, officially was Friday. They also did it uh, a little bit before. Uh, I think on Thursday were the first videos that came out uh, of that. And it's looking really great. Now, we did not expect anything else because they are straight away jumping to not the latest, latest version, but pretty much the latest version of FSD in the US. So that's one big leap that they are undergoing. Now, why can Australia and New Zealand do that? Well, they are in fact still part of the UNECE WP29 regulation. Um, so yeah, the problem there is, or the problem, uh, the thing is that UNE regulations, UNECE regulations, sorry, they are uh, regulations. They are not automatically converted into local laws. So Australia, New Zealand, they have chosen to implement the WP29 regulations, but uh, they can start doing things a little bit different. So they can kind of pick and choose what they want to implement. Um, and I'll come back to that why they we cannot do that, for example. Um, so they need to implement the regulations, but they can provide their own interpretation. And if they decide that it is not possible uh, or there are some conflicts in the regulation, they can actually uh, create their own version, their own interpretation of it and uh, provide an exemption like the Article 39 path that uh, Tesla is taking in the Netherlands, which I will come back to later on as well. Hey Kuldar, welcome from Estonia and uh, another one from Italy uh, and France as well. So welcome to the show. Now, um, most likely what happened is indeed that Tesla has released a separate software version that is not exactly the same as in the US. Uh, it will have some, um, compared to us, uh, what we have right now, some minor uh, changes, but still it will not be exactly the same. That's the most likely scenario that has happened. So why can't we have it in the EU then? Well, the EU prioritizes safety while Australia, New Zealand, they have prioritized innovation the way it should be, according to me. But, uh, and I think according to a lot of Tesla drivers as well. Um, so that means that if the UNEC regulations are not a law by default, why can't we do it? in Belgium, in France, wherever within the EU. Well, that's the problem of the EU. At EU level, uh, they have decided to, that all state members need to implement it to the letter. So Japan is the same thing. Uh, Korea is the same thing. Uh, hey Kuhn, welcome from the Netherlands. Um, so it's, it's the same thing there. Um, we are part, I think it's 29 countries now uh, that are in the EU. So we are forced by the EU to implement it to the letter, whereas Australia can make their own interpretation of uh, how to implement those regulations and turn them into local laws. That is the biggest problem. So we cannot make exemptions 
to those regulations because of the EU. So does that mean that we have to protest against the EU now instead of the UNECE? I think maybe both. Uh, it's not really obvious who is the real culprit here, but the EU is definitely holding it back just because it is to the letter of the law or the regulation that is being implemented. So there's that. That's the reason why we can't have it and Australia actually can have it, even though they fall under the same WP29 UNECE agreement uh, that was done back in 1958, I believe, or 52. Um, I think the next question is going to be from Graham. What about the UK? We are not part of the EU anymore. And you're right about that. So the EU is now a separate contracting party uh, within the WP29. So they do not fall under the EU. Um, and uh, thank you, Tim, for uh, becoming a member. Uh, really appreciate the support there. Thank you very much. Now, um, so the UK is remaining a contracting party, so they're still falling under WP29. Um, they tend to follow the UNEC regulations quite strictly, but there has been a regulation, and I have to look here, it's called the Automated and Electric Vehicles Act from 2018 that allows the government to designate certain vehicles as being autonomous vehicles. Now, this is geared towards level three plus cars. So level three, level four, level five. Um, Mercedes, uh, for example, can do that. And uh, yeah, BMW, I think also has it uh, by now. But uh, Tesla, supervised FSD, FSD beta, whatever you want to call it, is still a level two, if I really good level two system, uh, but it's still a level two because it requires that supervision. As of level three, uh, you have to go back and watch the other videos. I don't have the slide uh, handy right now. But as of level three, the automaker is taking responsibility. Level two, you as a driver are always responsible at any and all times. Um, so yeah, hey Tim, uh, really appreciate those uh, those comments, and it means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, um, that's one thing. Again, Graham, uh, you are right. Um, the workaround Tesla might be doing is the Article 39 uh, system, uh, and that only applies to the EU. Now, again, UK might follow that maybe, because what it does is it allows car makers like Tesla to apply for an exception. And that exception is then going to be valid for up to 36 months, and it can be extended. So the reason is, that technology is moving faster than the regulations, so they can allow it on the road under certain conditions uh, with heavy testing and everything uh, going before that. And once that has been approved, uh, the regulators basically have 36 months to catch up with the regulation. If not, it can be extended again. But in the meantime, it is allowed on the road in the Netherlands if it is approved there. Now, we know that it is happening. Um, what we don't know is the schedule, because so far it hasn't appeared on any of the uh, of the uh, the meeting notes uh, for the RDW in the Netherlands, um, but it can still happen this year. Now, as soon as it is approved, it is automatically becoming active immediately. So that's the good news. So even if it takes a few more months, it will automatically be active, but only in the Netherlands. At that point, um, two things, well, actually three things start to happen. First of all, the clock for 36 months starts running. Um, but also from that point, individual countries can choose to follow that same exception approval. So they can recognize, okay, the RDW has approved it. We recognize it. We take the same approach and it's allowed in our country as well. That is a possibility. I'm um, not sure if individual countries are actually going to do that, yes or no. Um, but since the RDW is the European organization for the general European homologation as well, I'd say the chances are not zero that this is happening. A third thing that is uh, going to happen at that point is that Article 40 
is going to come into effect. And Article 40 says that um, the RDW has to take it up with the uh, EC Council. So it's going to European level, EU level. And there they have to vote on it to accept it as a general regulation or a general approval. Again, two things can happen. It can be approved. As soon as it, is, as it is approved, it is automatically approved for all EU members at that point. So that would be the best case scenario that we can have. And that will be, I think, even the quickest way that it can do. But it can also take another six months to get that approval. Um, a second thing, uh, let, let me have a look. Uh, so yeah, if it is declined at that point, uh, well, then it also means that the RDW has to roll back their approval and Tesla has to roll back the system as well. So that would be the worst case scenario because you give hope to a few people, you let them have a taste and then you take it back. So that can be within six months, it can disappear again as well. So we don't know what is going to happen there. Uh, Fabio, not very confident because it seems RDW is still not assessed FSD. Correct. Do you think that a feature reduced FSD will be made available for EU after September? Um, to be honest, I have little hope for that. So the DCAS regulation has been approved for um, system initiated maneuvers on highways only. That would already be quite an improvement. Um, and I hope they will do something with that. But uh, I think that Tesla is not, as Rohan Patel said at the beginning of the year, uh, Tesla is not going to go into putting all these kinds of U and ECE flags in their code. It is a system that is designed to be a pure AI. So it's difficult to put some hard coded things in there. Um, even though they probably will have to do partly hard coded uh, since there are so many regulations that it has to follow really strictly. Like for example, in the US, it follows traffic instead of traffic regulations uh, in terms of speed um, here. Well, you get fined as soon as you go one mile an hour or one kilometer an hour above the speed limit uh, officially. So those things will have to be adjusted and we will have to get a separate version uh, nonetheless. I hope so. I really hope so. As of September 26th, it is going to be possible, but I think Tesla will want to roll out FSD as a package and not like a simplified version specifically for Europe. But we'll see. We'll see. Right now, my state of mind is more like, let's hope for the best, but expect the worst, right? Then you get the least disappointment, uh, especially since my car is still a hardware tree car. And I suspect that they will roll out everything to Model 3, Model Y, hardware four cars at first, as they are doing now in Australia uh, as well, because those are the most cars, they get the most data from it, is the, the, the cheaper cars uh, that they have. So that's why they have more of them. And probably that's the way they want to do it. And they also have kind of the latest technology in terms of the hardware for full self-drive as well, which I always found really weird because usually car makers go from top down and you got the Mercedes S-Class getting all the new stuff that trickles down to the cheaper ones. Here, it's the other way around. Usually you get the Model 3, Model Y getting the new stuff and then it trickles up to Model S, Model X, unfortunately. So yeah, as long as I will have the hardware 3, Model S, Plaid, um, I think uh, I will be kind of lost in line, unfortunately. But we'll see if the new plaid arrives, maybe I'll upgrade. Um, I don't know, but I think I would want to wait for Hardware 5 to be sure. Uh, but maybe that's the reason why it's not available in Europe anymore, because they're doing that upgrade to Model S. Who knows? Again, hope for the best, expect the worst. Um, so as I mentioned already, the rollout procedure, even if they do it like this, uh, the rollout procedure is going to be hardware four first and then model three, model Y, uh, probably even with a limited beta program as they did initially in the US uh, because our roads are vastly different from there. Um, but we'll see. Um, in, in I think 
in the next few weeks, I read it would roll out to customers already in uh, Australia and New Zealand. So we'll see how wide that rollout is going to be there. And that will definitely be a good indication for how it will be in our neck of the woods once it arrives. Um, another thing that uh, I expect the worst from, uh, but it's from a business perspective that I'm looking at things here, is that I don't think that Tesla will actually update the or upgrade the hardware three cars to hardware four or five. Um, I think Tesla will do whatever they can to get you into a new car uh, so they don't have to upgrade it. They will take the car back, uh, strip it from FSD and sell it as uh, enhanced autopilot only without an upgrade path to FSD. That's costing them the least amount of money to do it that way. Maybe they give you a little bit of a higher uh, trading fee for that, but we'll have to see uh, what that actually um, what that actually will be. Uh, but the upgrade will definitely, if it comes, it will definitely not happen before we are talking about unsupervised FSD. That's what Elon mentioned from the beginning as well. As long as it can run supervised FSD, even if it's a slimmed down version or not as good of a version, you still get the supervised uh, version, which is what we all paid for basically from the start. Um, with the promise of it will eventually go unsupervised, but I don't see unsupervised happening uh, this decade, to be honest, uh, especially not in uh, in Europe uh, with all the regulations. So yeah, that's my opinion. I hope I'm wrong. I'm hoping it's going to be a lot sooner than that, but we'll have to wait and see. So Robin, if, or, uh, if FSD does get approved by the RDW, Hardware 4 gets... FSD, would there be any hope for Dutch owners requesting retrofit? So I think I just answered that. Um, for supervised FSD, I don't think so, uh, because it does run on hardware tree. It's just a slightly worse version of it, but it does run as proven in the US. Um, it, you need to get to unsupervised, so level four or level three, uh, actually before they will start uh, thinking about doing retrofits and offering that to customers. Um, but if they do, well, they have to. Now, in the meantime, FSD is going to remain, I think, uh, transferable for the foreseeable future until all the uh, hardware three cars have, uh, have moved on to hardware four or maybe hardware five. Um, great. So um, that's kind of what I wanted to say. It's not a long live stream, but I hope this clarifies a lot of things for you. So Australia, yes, still part of UNEC. Some say they are not. Yes, they are part of the UNEC, but they fall under less strict rules because it's just Australia as one country. It's just New Zealand as one country and not the EU where our tiny countries are all linked together and Traveling between those countries is actually made easier uh, because of those EU regulations and those enforcement of those regulations. Unfortunately, we are on the other side right now of that of that uh, sword. So it's a double-edged sword. Uh, one thing is good. The bad thing is that it is also enforcing every country to slow down and not adopt FSD uh, supervised at the moment. So great, uh, again, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I hope you learned a bit. Uh, if there are any other questions, please still leave them in the comments underneath the video once the live stream is done. And uh, yeah, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you very much. Bye bye.